untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. This was recorded during the early access event, so thanks to Wizards for letting me preview the new cards from Frexia All Will Be One on this fully unlocked account. And today we're taking a look at red-white equipment, which is almost an entirely new archetype in standard, which uses a ton of new goodies, such as Jorkadeen, first gold warden, two mana, two to a legendary creature with trample, and whenever Jorkadeen attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures we control and then if it has power 4 or greater we get to draw a card. So there's a lot going on here, but Jorkadeen has excellent synergy with the new 4 Mirrodin equipment, such as the Barbed Batter Fist, a 2 mana 4 Mirrodin equipment, so it comes attached to a 2-2 Rebel token, giving it plus 1, minus 1, and then it equips for 1 mana. So we essentially get a 2 mana 3-1, but we also get an equipment left over if the opponent answers our Rebel, and then equipping Batter Fist to Jorkadeen will increase its power by 1, and then when it attacks it goes up to 4 power, and we immediately get to draw a card. Batterfist also very important alongside our Rebel Salvo, which is a 3 mana removal spell with affinity for equipment, so it gets a 1 mana discount for each equipment in play, so we can often cast it for just a single red mana, and then it deals 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker, also making it loose indestructible. So the best removal spell in standard if you can cast it for 1 mana, which often happens in this deck. And then another great payoff is Kemba, a 2 mana, 2-2 two, two legendary cat cleric, and when Kemba or another cat enters the battlefield under our control, we can attach up to one target equipment we control to that creature for free, and then all equipped creatures we control get plus one plus one, so a nice anthem effect for the entire team. And for 5 mana we could also make more cat tokens, which can then equip things for free as well. So there's a bit of a mana sink, although it doesn't come up often in standard at least. So Kemba can come down, maybe reuse one of the four Mirrodin equipment after the opponent killed the token, and that's especially effective alongside the Bladehold War Whip, a 3 mana 2-2 two, two double strike essentially, and then costs 5 mana to re-equip normally, but with Kemba we can get that double strike for free. And then it also says equipment costs 1 generic mana less to activate, so that counts in general even if it's not attached to a creature, so that's a great way to move around or batter fist for free, which can be helpful at enabling Jorkadeen, we can maybe move it onto our double strike creature so it deals more damage, or make sure every creature is equipped with Kemba out to give the plus 1 plus 1 bonus, so there's a lot of tricky interactions going on here as you can tell. And then to top it all off, we get to play with 4 copies of Astor, 4 mana, 4 4 legendary creature, gets to take a look at the top 7 cards to reveal an equipment and put it into our hand, so it provides a bit of card advantage. And then it also says equipment we control have equip for just 1 mana. So combine the 1 mana equip cost from Astor and the 1 mana discount from the War Whip, and all of a sudden we can equip some things for free, which is incredibly efficient. And then uh, we've got a few more curve toppers here with a Dragon Wing Glider, 5 mana, which is essentially a 4 4 with flying and haste in the form of a 4 Murden equipment that can then also be moved around. And then we've got more haste equipment with a rapid battery, 1-1 one, one with haste, and this is a reconfigure equipment, so it works a little bit differently than some of the other equipment out there, but we can still potentially combine it with Astor and the War Whip to equip for free. And more importantly, turn 1 battery into a turn 2 Kemba means we can equip the battery for free and attack for 4 damage, so that's pretty efficient. And then we also have an Eater of Virtue to give two additional power, very cheap to play and equip, so it can potentially be equipped for free thanks to our Bladehold War Whip as well. And then the Halberd, another cheap for Murden equipment, giving first rank and trample during our turn. And then a Sword of Forge and Frontier, especially exciting alongside the double striking War Whip, so we can potentially hit the opponent twice in one attack step to exile the top two cards, and then we can cast those cards until end of turn, and also play an additional land. So with double strike we could potentially exile four cards and play up to three lands that turn. And uh, yeah, the mana base is pretty straightforward, got the channel lands, no new fast land here, so just playing the Battlefield Forge and Sundown Pass and a couple basics. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, hand is probably keepable. Opponent on blue-white. And then we have to decide between Batter Fist or Jorkadeen first. And, uh, yeah, can run out Jorkadeen. 
Next turn maybe War Whip. And then Astro lets us equip things for free. Okay, battery's interesting. Could play battery, put it on Jorkadine to draw. I think War Whip still has more upside. So let us play the War Whip now. So we pump Jorkadine as well. So I don't think the protection from swords is going to be relevant in this matchup. Put in some sort of blue control strategy. But we've got some useful tools in hand. We have Blue Sun's Twilight to steal our token. Now we still control the equipment. So we'll steal it right back here with Astor. Yeah, definitely have a lot of options here. So that didn't work out. Well, we could play Kemba, attach the War Whip, play Battery, and give Kemba haste. March to exile it. Okay. So, probably no attacks done since we don't have any equipped creatures. What's next? Could play Sword, equip it for one mana. Could play Kemba. Again, attach the whip to it. Give it haste. It's not a bad start. And then if we play the Batter Fist, it will also grow Jorkadine even more. So we can actually attack with it. And draw as well. Mind Splice Apparatus to discount instants and sorceries going forward. And opponent jumping. Still takes four. We could move the batter fists thanks to the war whip. Yeah, maybe put it on Jorkadine. Probably should have done so to begin with. Facade puts an extra counter on apparatus. Spells now get a two mana discount. Scrutiny draws two. And we get to untap, play sword. And we'll attach it to the token, I guess. Never mind. Well, still get a healthy attack in. And then we should still have lethal here if we attack with everyone. Jorkadin still gets a nice bonus. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is lacking some cheap equipment. So it's not actually all that great. Play Kemba and then Salvo for three mana. I think this is a Mulgan. This is better. And then we'll curve probably Batter Fist into Kemba. Not even sure if I want to move any equipment since we can just hit for four. Okay, Jorkadine is interesting. So now if I play Jorkadine next turn, I could play Batter Fist equip and draw. And the forge makes a 1 1, which we can block for now. And we'll stick to the plan.
still have a 2-2 left over on defense as we hit for 4 and draw. Okay, hand is shaping up nicely. Adaptive grows Beast Caller. And a Sprinter can add two counters to the Forge. If they want to. So that now makes a 4-1. Alright, so we're taking 8. That's gonna hurt. Sprinter goes back to hand. And another batter fist. So, what's our move? Do we still try and play Astor? Might be better off playing multiple smaller creatures. Let's say I play batter fists and Kemba to pump Jorkadine, and then we still get to draw and get the extra token. Point falls to 10. All right, let's see if we can survive. The uh, War Whip is excellent alongside Astor, as we'll be able to equip things for free, but the Glider might just be the move instead. Okay, so that's 10 without Trample, 5 with. So, let's say I chump chump, take 5 down to 5, then next turn play Glider, which would be a 5-5 five five thanks to Kemba, and we attack with all then we should have lethal, since Jorkadine's gonna get plus three plus three. So we'll trample for one. Yep, yeah, the math checks out. I'm sure there's other combinations that could also work here. Yeah, this was a close and interesting game against the red green oil counters. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands pretty decent if we pick up an extra land, especially a red source. With multiple equipment to discount salvo. Opponent on white aggro. So now, plan is maybe to play Jorkadine first. And the Vector might. Okay. We did pick up the land. So now with the lands, maybe still prefer Batter Fists. And then War Whip sets up one mana salvo. Since we kind of have to play defense here against a mono white aggro deck. Steel Seraph, definitely worth taking out. Just gotta make sure Defector Might is tapped. And giving it Vigilance as a way to attack and still activate. Although it's going to fly instead. Yeah, happy to trade off my token here. Probably for mechanic. And now we can kill the Steel Seraph if we'd like. Although, might still be better off playing a War Whip to then have a 1 mana salvo instead of a 2 mana one, which is pretty inefficient here. And then I get to equip the Batter Fist for free. So we get a 3-1 double strike. So next turn we should have a pretty efficient turn. Double Salvo. Maybe play Kemba as well. Mm, 
Not sure if they have a trick here, maybe I Ganjo. That's fine. Only two mana, thanks to the legendary might. Okay. So, Kemba, equip War Whip for free, double salvo. And then I should definitely kill Seraph now. And then maybe hang on to the second salvo. Potent's probably playing with Unctus, which can pump all artifact creatures. So that could be a reason to uh, hang on to one more removal spell. Alright, the Hive shows up. And the Frontliners are opponents empty-handed now. Good to know. And then probably kill the Might itself now. Another Salvo was excellent. So play Jorkadeen. I can equip a Batter Fist for free, but probably better to wait until next turn and just play another Batter Fist. And then I think Kemba gets to attack too. And then we can equip this for free, thanks to Kemba. Maybe should have equipped Kemba itself before attacking to get two extra damage in. That's okay. Equip uh, Jorkadin now. And I think I'm happy with the uh, equipment spread out. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, things that are easy to miss in this deck, with a War Whip especially. Bonus attacks. Then the frontliners might pump each other. I'm okay with the rebel trades. And a backup might. Okay, another war whip is uh, exciting. So let's say we play war whip. That means Jorkadin gets additional power. Batter Fist goes on probably Kemba for free. And in fact, if I just salvo the Might, we would have 14 damage, so that's lethal. Okay. Yeah, this deck is not easy to play. Whenever you get to do things for 1 or 0 mana, it means you've got a ton more options than other decks may have. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand's not amazing, but seems keepable. Battery into Jorkadin. And then if we equip on turn 3, we'll uh, have a 4-powered creature to draw. Put on blue-white. Make that a Bant with a Rock Priest. It's a poison deck. Okay, now I could play Halberd and then next turn Jorkadin, give it haste. Should work out a little bit better. Okay, let's give it a shot. Send in both. They probably have a pump spell here to pump the Rock Priest, but uh, make them use it. Opponent takes seven. And then 
can maybe hang on to Aiganjo. We will march to get a second Rot Priest. Yeah, that's effective. And a third. Okay. Take two more poison. And uh, eat our virtues, not bad here. So I'll say play battery and then equip the eater to the battery itself. That would pump Jorkadine the most and just attack for the most damage. If I play Astor, I can't really do anything else with it. So, sure. And best case scenario, top deck a salvo with Jorkadine. I'm assuming we're dead to pump spells anyway. Shore up plus three poison. Three more on the board. I guess we can unequip the battery. So we have a blocker back. And that's the best we can do. Opponent is at three, so we did get them pretty low. But a triple Rot Priest opener is going to be hard to beat. And yeah, March should do it here. That's six poison triggers. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And seems promising. Got the battery into Kamba Opener. And then War Whip plus Astro if we get to the late game is also pretty decent. Just need to hit our land drops. Put on blue whites with a tablet of completion. Smash for four. The next turn can play a batter fist at the very least, hopefully a war whip instead. Ooh, gauntlets, so planeswalker deck. At least we can apply a good bit of pressure here. And then land for Astor means we can move our equipment around pretty easily. So the tablets can now make one mana. Don't really mind if Kemba dies since we have a replacement. Ooh, Urza assembles the Titans. Okay, does our opponent put a Planeswalker in play right away? They do. And it's going to be the Eternal Wonder. At least Salvo can take care of it. But... Uh, yeah, that's a setback since it goes up to 6 loyalty, so we'd have to attack it here. Now what if we play Astor? Yeah, that's going to be better. Grab Glider, perhaps. So we'll take out uh, Wanderer. Kemba goes face. Okay. And then, do we want to move anything back? Don't think so. So now our opponent can double activate a Planeswalker. Ooh, Vraska. So they could exile both of my creatures. Although now we've got a bunch of treasure and another Kemba and Glider, so 
Should be able to figure out lethal here. We've got seven mana to work with. So let's say we just play Glider, play Kemba. Kemba equips the battery. Yeah, that should be more than enough. Awesome. So good to see some neat synergies here with all the equipment. And the deck is definitely tricksy to play. So it rewards experience, and I'm sure we haven't reached the perfect build of it yet. But we'll have to wait and see whether it has what it takes to compete in a world full of uh, toxic decks now, since that seems to be the boogeyman of the format going into the new standard. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.